Thanksgiving isn't just about the falling leaves and the changing seasons. It isn't just about traditions, decorations, and meals together. Thanksgiving is about being grateful to God. This is Thanksgiving. Not just a holiday we celebrate once a year, but an attitude we carry with us every day and everywhere we go. This is Thanksgiving. Not just thanking God when life is good, but trusting Him because He is good in every season and every circumstance. This is Thanksgiving. A time to look back and remember all that God has done this past year. And a time to look forward in faith to what He might do in the coming year. In a world where so much is changing, we serve a God who never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this week is an opportunity to remember the greatest blessing of all, the grace we have in Jesus. This is Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving, don't you? You don't have to buy presents. It's just a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Do you have many memories of Thanksgiving? I mostly have good memories. Memories of turkey and the smell and mom cooking all this stuff and watching football, playing football outside. Um, where I grew up in the Midwest, it was really pretty cold. Sometimes it was snow, sometimes it wasn't. But I just love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is so important, not just this season, but your attitude of gratitude, whether it's really high or low, whether you're a, a person that, that focuses on what isn't or you're a person that focuses on what is, is really, really, really important. It has profound implications for your life. Just first, research tells us that giving thanks, being a person that focuses on what is, is really good for your health, your physical health. This is from the Mayo Clinic, and they wrote these words. They said, expressing gratitude is associated with a host of mental and physical benefits. Studies have shown that feeling thankful can improve sleep, mood, and immunity. Gratitude can decrease depression, anxiety, difficulties with chronic pain, and risk of disease. If a pill could do this, everyone would be taking it. I like that. I mean, if there was a pill, what's a pill? You know, if, if a pill could do this, everyone would be taking it. Now watch this. Your brain is designed to problem solve rather than appreciate. Your brain, especially I think if you're a guy, is, is designed to problem solve. Okay, what is it? How can we fix it? Rather than appreciate what is. You often must override this design to reap the benefits of gratitude. And so learning to be people, learning to be people that, that gives thanks in all circumstances is not only good for you physically, our physical health, but it's also absolutely necessary for our spiritual health. Absolutely necessary for our spiritual health. Without gratitude, without overriding our natural tendency to focus on what isn't, uh, our faith is in peril. Now, I know that sounds really strong, and, and I wrote that, and it sounds really strong, but it's not, as I hope you'll see today. Now, you might think, well, listen, I'm a little joy impaired. I'm not Mr. Thankful. I'm not Miss Positive. I'm not a count your blessings kind of person. I am kind of a glass, half empty, Eeyore kind of personality. You know Eeyore. Oh me, oh my, why did I wake up this morning? Eeyore. Uh, but it doesn't really affect my faith, you might say. Because of the family system I grew up in and because of my circumstances, because of my personality, it's just the way I am. But I have a strong faith. It doesn't really affect it, but actually it really does. You see, ingratitude, Ingratitude is not just a personality quirk. It's not just kind of a drag to be around people that are like that all the time. 
But it's a serious spiritual issue. Let me just say it again. Ingratitude is not just a personality quirk. It's a serious spiritual issue. Why? Here's why. Because gratefulness and grace go together. Gratefulness and grace go together. Gratefulness demonstrates that you have received grace and that you're living in grace. And when we're not thankful, when we're not, don't have a spirit of gratitude, grace is slipping out of our lives. And when grace slips out of our lives, our faith is in trouble. So to be thankful, we have to remember. Thankfulness and remembering go hand in hand. Thankfulness and remembering go hand in hand. Um, remember is a key biblical word. In the Old Testament, it, it's, it's always remember, remember, remember. One key event, the Exodus, where God rescued and saved his people out of slavery over 400 years. And the Old Testament constantly says they sinned against God, they went their own path because they forgot. They forgot the grace of God. And so in the New Testament, what the New Testament writers, the event we're constantly called to remember is the rescue, not from, well, from slavery, but from slavery to sin and selfishness. And that's why at the Lord's Supper, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Remember, remember, remember. Remember this event. Gratitude is a recognition and a remembering of God's grace. Likewise, ingratitude, thanklessness, is forgetting the grace of God. And when we forget the grace of God, we flounder in our faith. So again, gratitude and grace go together. In fact, gratitude or thankfulness has the same Greek word as grace. So literally, in the original language that the New Testament uh, was written in, literally, Gratitude, thankfulness comes out of the word for grace. So let's consider really fast Psalm 95, which is in the Old Testament. And this song is written to help them. Uh, it's pointing to the Exodus, where God redeemed and rescued his people. And uh, the psalmist starts out this, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before him with thanksgiving. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and let us make a joyful, uh, 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 let us make, let us make a joyful to him. I missed something. Noise. Yeah, joyful noise. Thank you for that. Uh, and then here comes the warning, right? He says this, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Because when you forget, it, it's, it, it, it touches your spiritual heart. When we forget the goodness and grace of God, it, it has a hardening effect on our spiritual hearts. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as they did at Meribah, as, you, as they did on the day of Massah. I'll explain that briefly. Where your fathers tested and tried me, though they had seen what I did. You see what's going on here? They saw what God had done in the past. The situation changed, and they forgot what God had done in the past, and it affected their spiritual heart. So thanklessness cut them off from the God, great grace of God, and it affected their heart. Meribah and Massah were, were places where um, uh, the people were wandering in the desert, and they didn't have water and food, and they complained, and they grumbled. Well, God had given them food and water recently, but they forgot. Even though they saw what God did, all the miracles of getting out of Egypt, even though God gave them manna in the morning and, and, and water during the day, when it dried up for a short season, they forgot. Are you ever like that in your spiritual journey? You know, you kind of pray and ask for something, and it seems that God answers, and you go, yes, yes, I'll never be late for church again. Yes, I'll always listen to sermons. Yes, I'll do all these. I'll love you forever and ever and ever. And then you go through another dry season where you're going, anybody home? God? And you forget, you forget the grace of God and you wander in your faith and your heart starts to harden a little bit. That happens to all of us. They failed to remember, though they seen what God had done. And it wasn't just bad manners. What happens to these people? 
is they didn't make it into the promised land. Not because they were ill-mannered. It's because they failed to connect thankfulness with the grace of God. They forgot the grace of God. And in fact, it's interesting and sobering that um, ungratefulness is a sign of people that don't know God. Uh, look at what Paul writes in the book of Romans to Christians at Rome. He says, he's talking about people that don't know God. He said, for, all they, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. See, a, a sign of people that, that don't know God, that don't want to follow God, that don't want anything to do with faith, a sign is they're ungrateful. And the Apostle Paul writes this to young Timothy. He says this, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. Uh, and by the way, the last days has been these last 2,000 years since Jesus rose from the dead. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. So again, being ungrateful, being thankless, is not just bad manners and impolite. It is. But as followers of Jesus, as people who want to honor God and grow in our faith and be more mature, thanklessness is a serious issue. Are you tracking with me? Because again, to say it 10 times, it's not just about being polite and imp or impolite. It's really about um, our spiritual journey, thankfulness. Because when we're not thankful, we forget the grace of God. Let's tune into Jesus. He tells a story about this one time. And he's traveling with the disciples, and they, uh, anyway, the, the gospel writer Luke writes this. As Jesus was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Now, to live a life of a leper uh, is, not merely, is not living, it's surviving. Lepers were kicked out of the community. They couldn't be with their family. They couldn't go to the store. They couldn't be in the city. They were outcasts. If they did come into the city, they had to carry a big bell and ring it and yell, unclean, unclean, unclean. Can you imagine that kind of existence? It would be horrible. You couldn't hug your kids. You couldn't hug your wife. You, you couldn't go to church. You couldn't go to school. You couldn't do anything. It's total alienation and total isolation. So when the, when the 12 heard that Jesus was around, of course, they had heard rumors about him. And so they humbled themselves and, they, and they, they cried out, Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. Save us. Rescue us. Because we can't rescue ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We can't, we can't fix what's on the outside and we can't fix what's on the inside. So Jesus says, go show yourselves to the priests. Go show yourselves to the priests. See what, what, if you thought you were healed, you would go to the priest and he would give you the thumbs up or thumbs down. If he gave the thumbs up, then you could go back into society. But Jesus tells them to go to the priests before they were healed. And in the act of going, they were healed. There's another sermon there, but not for today. Unless you'd like one, a second sermon. <laughs> okay. It's in the act of going. Sometimes we want to have faith and, and have it come to us. But often, Jesus says, take a step, follow me. Follow me. Take a step. Go to the priest and show yourself. But we're not healed yet. Go to the priest and show them. Yeah, but, all right, let's just go. And as they're going, they're healed. They are healed. And as they saw themselves being healed, of course, how did they respond? Well, how did they respond? Luke writes this. One of them, next. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, he came back. He came back. He turned around and came back, praising God in a loud voice. I guess so. I mean, if you've been physically healed, if you've been imprisoned by something and been set free, you're emotional about it. If your team wins the Super Bowl, come on, 49ers. <laughs> yeah, you're excited about it, right? But if you're healed, if a marriage comes together, if a prodigal comes home, then you're excited about it. 
And he's excited in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan, meaning Jewish people had nothing to do with Samaritans. But this Jewish person, Jesus, not only had something to do with him, but he healed him. And so this one comes back. This one comes back. And Jesus asks him this question. We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? I, I, I wonder if sometimes God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus are in heaven and going, where are the other? What? Didn't we bless all of them? And only one came back? Ten percent came back? And I just wonder if it breaks their hearts. We blessed all of them. We, we answered this way. We give them grace that they take for granted. Why didn't everybody come back and say, thank you? Where are the other nine? Do you take God's grace for granted? Do you take God's grace? We all take God's grace for granted. I read this years ago in a Christian magazine, these kind of um, convicting questions. Just listen to them. Why was I born in a spotless delivery room in an American hospital Spittle, instead of a steamy shelter in a dank jungle in the Amazon or in a mud hut in Africa? Why did I have the privilege of going to school with capable instructors with, while millions around the world without a school book sit or squat on a dirt floor listening to a missionary? How does it happen that my children are tucked into warm beds at night with clean white sheets while millions of babies in the world will lie in cold rooms, many in their own filth and vomit? Why can I sit down to a warm meal whenever I want to and eat too much when millions will know all of their lives the gnawing pangs of hunger? Why am I, an American, sitting comfortably in my own living room this Thanksgiving rather than an Indian squatting in a dark corner of some infested alley in Calcutta? shivering in the cold, or a Cam Cambodian sitting in the rubble that used to be my home, or a terrified Nigerian running in the jungle. Do I deserve it? By what right do I have? It's just so easy to take the things that we take for granted for granted and not give thanks. In fact, most of us, maybe nine out of ten of us, are just prone in the face of God's abundant graciousness and mercy, just to, just to forget. Just to forget. And so I like what the Mayo Clinic said. We have to constantly train ourselves to be thankful for what is. The story ends with Jesus saying to the one leper who returned, he said, rise and go, your faith has made you well. He said, to be made whole is to be made well. He's saying, you have, you have been made whole, not just physically whole, but really spiritually whole. Because he came to Jesus, he humbled himself and said, rescue me, save me. Again, being thankful is not just about our happiness or being pleasant. It's about the spiritual health of our heart. So what can we do to purposefully focus on what is, to remind ourselves over and over to be thankful people? What, what can we do to keep our hearts soft and supple and, and not miss the grace of God? Four thoughts real quick. Number one is just remember. Remember what is. Gratitude grows when we remember. In verse 15 it said, he saw he was healed. See, there's a seeing that perceives. We, we can see, but do we perceive? That's why Jesus said we, we can have eyes but not see, ears but not hear, remember. Um, that's why writing stuff down is so important. And just remember that the, the two times that, that I think are really good to remember are at a meal time or before you go to bed. At a meal time, you just, just pause and just say, God, thank you. For the stuff that's obvious, thank you for food, thank you for shelter, thank you for, for health or degrees of it. Thank you for relationships, thank you for the church, thank you for the freedom, thank you for sunshine, thank you for the leaves changing. I had a great walk at, at 7 this morning with a little bubble head on my chest, you know? 
and it's just beautiful out. And do we take that for granted? Not after the summer we had, but you know, we, we just, there's just so many things. Or right before you go to bed, even as your head's hitting the pillow, just, Lord, thank you for this. Remember, remember, remember. Remember, remember, remember. The second thing is respond. Um, respond. Give thanks in all circumstances. Notice it doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. Sometimes Christians get this mixed up. You ever met a follower of Jesus like that? Oh, you're sick, you know. You're, oh, oh, praise God, I'm supposed to give thanks. No, not for everything. It's not all good. It's not all good. There's lots of bad. There's lots of evil. But what the Apostle Paul says is in circumstances that not, are not good, you can still give thanks for the grace of God. Thank you, God, that you love me. Thank you, God, that you've gone through this same degree of pain and suffering that I've gone through. Thank you, God, that this is not unfamiliar to you. Thank you, God, that when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Thank you, God, that I'm not alone. Thank you, God, that the church is praying for me. Thank you, God. See, we're not, not necessarily give thanks for all circumstances, but in all circumstances, especially when we connect it to the God it, that is, that is above all circumstances, but walks with us in circumstances. Does that make sense? I'm not an amen kind of guy, but can we just... Amen. Amen. amen means yes, by the way. That's why I say yes. Respond, respond, remember and respond, meals and bedtime. And just make it a habit. It takes a few weeks to ingrain that habit, right? Just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you have kids, how important is it to model this for our kids? In a world where, where, you know, we're constantly reminded of what isn't. To remind our kids and one another of what, what is the stuff we take for granted. Remember, respond, repent of ingratitude. Our text says that the one leper came back. That's repentance language. Repentance means you, you're, you're going in the wrong direction and you realize you're lost. And then you turn back and come back to the right place. Um, and so I think we need to also repent, just say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of thinking only of my own needs and my own comfort. Forgive me, Lord, for just wanting more and more and more and not pausing to praise you for what is. Just forgive me, Lord. Remember, repent, respond. And the last thing is just repeat the scriptures. Um, you know that I'm a great believer in memorizing and repeating the scriptures. This is what Jesus did when, when he was tempted by the evil one. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, which you can do. I'll take that for granted that you can do it. <laughs> Feel free to do it. I have trouble with three days. By the way, they, they say that after on the fourth day, your body doesn't feel the hunger pains. Not going there. I, I'm, <laughs> day two, I'm like... <laughs> Where am I? When Jesus was tempted, what did he do? Three times the evil one tempted him, and three times he responded with scripture that he had memorized. Here are a few that I would memorize. This is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and give thanks in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice. Philippians 4, you might know this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say it, rejoice. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, those are the things I want to think about. So you write these down and you memorize them. And then, you know, after weeks and months and years, it gets inside your spirit. And it's still hard for me to be thankful and grateful and focus on what is rather than what isn't. Because isn't there a lot that isn't? Isn't there a lot that isn't? And it's not that we want to be in denial, but we want to be thankful. And thankful people remember what is. And it's not easy. I went off on advertising before, but advertising's job is to make us feel discontent. 
advertising job in a nutshell is this isn't, you isn't, it isn't, your car isn't, your teeth isn't, your tra everything isn't. But if you buy this, bum, 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 you'll be satisfied for three days. <laughs> and the last one is give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in. And you know, when you, when you, when you take, make the habit or the discipline of memorizing, give thanks in all circumstances, and I put it in the first person, Jamie, give thanks in all circumstances. You do it 10,000 times. It starts to get into your spirit. This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. Most days I, I drive to church with uh, Tiffany, and I have a litany of verses that I go through. And... Um, and sometimes during the week, she'll hear me saying them, and she'll go, Dad, it's not Sunday. <laughs> I can be thankful on other days than Sunday, you know? I can put on my happy face on Tuesday, too, you know? <laughs> Give thanks. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the connected to the grace of God. We are to be people that remember. And when we remember what God has done, what God is doing, and what God has for us, we will be more and more thankful. Okay? Let's stand and uh, sing this song of response after I lead us in a brief prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all it is. We thank you for coming into our lives, per, for pursuing us, to helping us understand the good news that we are lost and you pursued us and now we're found. We're not any better than anyone else at all. But by your grace, somehow we got it. Thank you for putting people in our lives that uh, lived out and shared the good news that we would get it. And so, Lord, on this week, as we focus and think about what is, may we continue to work for what isn't. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We, you've called us to be change agents. But also, each and every day, Whatever the circumstances, may we learn to be content and may we learn to thank you and praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen.